Hello, welcome to Mlima Discussion Forum with me, Good Luck Paul. And the topic today is compatibility of Tanzania education system with development of student talents. And today's focus is on students' perspective. And it's very fortunate that we have managed to be in with Letricia Palmer, a uh, finalist student of Tumaini University, Dar es Salaam College, Tudako, and uh, Christina Kibuta, mm -hmm. a finalist student of University of Dar es Salaam College of Natural and Applied Science Scholars, mm -hmm. and the winner of uh, Kesho Leo Science Slam, organized by DW, um, ITV, and the University of Dar es Salaam. And I think uh, she will be able to tell us more about what she managed to showcase. <music> So uh, to commence our discussion today, I'd like to start with uh, Letricia Pamba. Can you tell us about, um, uh, and, and mind you that I've managed to call you in because you have at least uh, been exposed uh, to um, education system levels, uh, primary, secondary education, um, higher learning, uh, and now you have a finali you're finalizing. Yeah. So how, how can you tell us about the, I mean, the conceptualization of the talent? Well, okay, so to me, when you talk about talent, talent is something that you can do without effort. And somebody else is going to do it with effort. Uh, example, you can sing. Uh, you, you're you a really good singer. But some people cannot sing. And you can understand why that happens. Mm -hmm. Example, I can write. That is my talent. And I call it a God-given talent because it's something you're born with. I didn't mm -hmm. choose to, to write, but somehow I just can write. So along the way, I just realized I could write. So I can do it really well that people that even studied writing, even before I studied writing, and I wondered why. So to me, that is talent when you can just do it all over and you're just best at it. Wow, that's very interesting. Would you mind yeah. to tell us uh, what are your talents and when did you exactly manage to realize them? Okay, <laughs> that is a good question. <laughs> okay, so when it comes to talent, uh, I, I have a lot of talents actually. I was blessed, thank God I was blessed with a lot of talents. So I can write, that is the first thing that is very close to me. I can sing, I can rap, I can design. So it's just all over the place. It's a lot of talents. Oh, but I had to find a struggle. I, I got a struggle with that because at the end of the day, you have to choose something and mm -hmm. go for it. You know, mm -hmm. I can't be a singer and a writer and a fashion designer. It was like I was Absolutely. all over the place. Sure. Um, when I was in form three, uh, that's when I realized I could write. I didn't okay. know before that. But singing, I did that since I was young, dancing as well. I did that since I was like eight. Yeah. I did that since I was eight. Mm -hmm. um, I think uh, taking literature helped me realize that I could write. Oh. Yeah, so from there it was like, okay, writing and writing and writing, and I guess here we are. Thank you. <laughs> I wish you'd, you'd make a good writer. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, sure. Um, Christina, before telling yeah. us about the project which um, made you win this fabulous um, mm -hmm. prize, that uh, <laughs> I, I think I and uh, so many people out there are very enthusiastic to know uh, what was it and how did you manage to win? Mm. Um, would you like to respond to the same questions that, uh, um, how would you briefly um, tell um, the meaning of talent and uh, mm. what are your talents and when did you manage to realize them? Oh, thank you so much. Okay. Um, I think I cannot really go so far from what she said. She said talent is something you do effortlessly, right? You don't put so much work into it. You know, it just comes, it's, it's like something is inside of you and then it just comes out when you're given a platform. Okay. So I think that's what you can you can call talent. And um, as for me, I don't think I have many talents. I think my talent is on my personality. I believe I have a very catchy personality, which not everybody has. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like my area of influence. And um, I think I'm talented when it comes to speech. You know, I think I have a very big convincing power. Like I can convince some, somebody to do something or I can stand and talk to somebody and, you know, get them to do what I want them to do. Not in a bad way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so I think I, when did I realize that? I think way back from primary. Um, I got into different leadership positions, okay. like starting from nursery all the way, you know, so from there you could, 
you could it's like people will tell you go talk to this teacher we need something and then i'll go there and i'll tell i'll tell the teacher like okay we need one two three and then the teacher would listen and you know he would agree um as compared if somebody else went there so i was like okay so i'm so good at speech <laughs> and convincing somebody so i was like okay i'm just gonna so much invest in this one well, um, you have won this big prize. Uh, can you tell us uh, a little bit about it? And you can um, even show us. Ah, okay. Yeah, yes. sure. So my prize yeah, is right sure. here. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Wow. So, yeah. It's marvelous. <laughs> can I touch it? Oh, it's uh, okay. <laughs> uh, this is it. Thank yeah. You. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, tell um, us a little bit about it. Um, about the prize or about the project? About the prize and the project. Uh, because okay. the project made you win this marvelous <laughs> prize. So I had this project. It started like um, in second year. I was just trying it out, trying it out. And um, I said, okay, let me just present this. Maybe it might do something cool. or go out there. Yeah, so I sent according to their um, specifications okay. what they wanted. So I had to write a summary for it. And then we had to do a video, a video that had to be um in two minutes so that we can explain briefly about the project so i did that i sent it and then okay so they gave us the results so came yesterday which was the final day um it was really overwhelming right you know sitting there and looking at all the other people and the judges and looking at my teachers you know oh. some of my <laughs> teachers were there and i was like if i'm gonna lie about something they're gonna notice yeah. So, yeah, so came yesterday, I presented the way I did. I'm just glad the audience took it very positive. Um, and they made me feel at home on that stage, you yeah. know, and I wasn't really expecting that. And, yeah, so here well, we yeah. are. You, you know, I wasn't there, but I thought <laughs> that you did a wonderful job. Oh, thank um, you. Can you tell us about the project that, you, um, that made you win this? So my project is basically on preparation of a certain thing called <laughs> sodium alginate okay. from a plant that grows in the oceans sometimes it grows naturally but you can cultivate it okay. yeah if you want a large stock you have to cultivate it but it goes naturally if you've gone to the beach there these um small they're, they're always in clusters they're small brown plants they're called moan in kiswahili okay i don't know if you know about it but yeah so from that plant i get the thing called sodium alginate is it's a chemical compound so what's the use of sodium alginate sodium alginate is used um as a thickener or a binder basically gundi like oh, you know, yeah, yeah to yeah. to to put fibers colored fibers on your clothes mm -hmm. like so this cloth was um primary white like cotton is white okay. right so if you want to dye that you want to put it into blue into green into red you have to use colored dyes now for the colored dyes to stick to your cloth you need a binder you need a thickener so that's the thing oh. so um currently in our country we use touch base binders mm -hmm. which are not so good that's why our clothes wear out easily and they the color washes out easily so i had to think of something that is um extra effective okay. or even more effective so I came up with sodium alginate. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> so you went out there and did your own investigation you. and found out that uh, that plant can produce that... Uh... Yeah, you have to go some chemical processes to okay. actually extract that from the plant. And then you try it on different fabrics. You try it on styles of fabric and um, cotton fabric. Then you see how, how effective it can be. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. This is Mlima Discussion Forum with me, Godlek Po. And today's topic is compatibility of Tanzanian education system with the development of student talents. We are with Detricia Palm and uh, Christina Kibuta. Detricia, um, you have said earlier that uh, talent is something inborn and uh, it, it needs to be cultivated, to be developed. Yeah. And as we are discussing on the compatibility, I mean correspondence of uh, uh, skills that offered in schools mm -hmm. uh, how are they able to develop uh, to transform and make sure that student talents um, are reaching um, i mean are hitting the jackpot yeah. you know uh, for your for your for your side did you manage to cultivate your talent while in school uh, i could say school contributed a lot uh, 
at a world large extent school okay. really helped me first in identifying that i have that talent okay. because without school i wouldn't have known that i could write you know it didn't just come out there you know you need to have some inspiration to like make you realize mm. that i have something in me but i think this goes beyond uh, what talent you have yeah. Basically, my talent of writing helped me in school because at school I was learning how to write through literature. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had something to study and tell me like, okay. But then if it was maybe music, I wouldn't have learned that from school. So I don't know if you get what I'm trying sure, to like sure, cultivate. Absolutely. Yeah. Sure. So um, school contributes a lot for me. Mm -hmm. It did. Um, after taking literature, my teachers actually noticed that I could write. So they they just like try to help me here and there. Okay. It's a good thing that I'm really thankful for my teachers in O level and mm -hmm. A level. But then there was a point where after I realized that I could write, I started looking for opportunities out of school. So I could say for a person out there mm -hmm. who is watching, it's mm -hmm. gonna be two ways. School might help you, but okay. then you have to go that extra mm -hmm. mile sure. to try and develop yourself outside school. Well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's that's the schools that you went through. Yeah, that is the schools sure, I sure, went through. Sure. Do you think this is uh, the, the your story is the same story to other schools out there? Well, just like I said, <laughs> my school I, uh -huh. I had supportive teachers, you know, and the school and the subjects I chose okay. as well, you know, it contributed. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think this is a very different story from mm -hmm. other people, you know, because when you, when you look at this, you know, I was studying at an English medium school at to see me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, you, you could have other schools where, you know, they don't study literature maybe oh. or they don't have that subject that is going to like pull you in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And also, as I said before, it depends on the talent. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's your one way ticket to success. <laughs> well, good. <laughs> Among the things that I've realized is that uh, you have said that you, you do write. And yeah. uh, so uh, can you tell them where they can really get access to, to my writings yes your writings okay. the platforms that you use to um expose those uh, writings. okay so uh, currently i'm a journalist okay and a writer oh. so i write for newspapers our uh, daily news okay. and also the citizen newspaper and i'm i'm also writing and editing for Dar life magazine oh. so when you see Dar life magazine or daily newspaper or yes, the citizen yes. you could so, possibly find so my writings i think, I think uh, Trisha is so available and can be accessed in all these big platforms. Yeah. Um, well, Christina, <laughs> yeah. do, you, do you think uh, Tanzanian education system, because you have exposed to it, uh, you mm -hmm. have gone through primary education, secondary um, university, do you think uh, this education system is mm -hmm. going hand in hand with uh, cultivation of student talents? Oh, that's a very tricky question. <laughs> Um, I think to a certain extent it is, okay. you know, it is to a certain extent. And, um, I think the correspondence is very relative, you know, it really depends on a lot of factors, the technological, um, development in that country and so many. So I think we're always comparing it to European countries, but we should also sit back and see like sure. our country, uh, the other countries are very developed. So you cannot really say um, our country is not very practical and stuff, but you just have to check. It's very relative. So for me, I could say in simple terms that mm -hmm. it's very, um, to an extent, extent mm -hmm. they're trying. Cool. I mean, they're really trying their best because, okay, if we, we come to um, university level, mm -hmm. we have research weeks mm -hmm. at our university, right? Sure. At University of Dar es Salaam. Yeah, we do exhibitions and people come and see what we're doing. So they're really trying to a certain extent to mm -hmm. develop our talents and yeah. to showcase it out there. You say <laughs> to a certain extent. What do you think is missing and uh, how can we feel in the game? Oh, I think um, we're just, I think we're just, very comfortable with whatever we're doing um so we're not too out of comfort zone. yeah we should really get out of our comfort zone because okay. the, the world is going up so fast yeah. and technology is heating up you know so we need to to be very creative mm -hmm. very innovative mm -hmm. we have to go out of our comfort zone and say tanzania can get to a place okay. and we have to be focused and we have to come up with strategies mm -hmm. to get tanzania to that particular place because if we say okay our country is not developed but hey, the, okay. the developed countries, they did something about it. They mm -hmm. didn't just sit, right? They did something. And I'm sure we can do something. Wow, oh, amazing. <laughs> You're watching Lima Discussion Forum with me, Good Luck Paul. Um, we are lucky to have uh, Latricia Pamba and Christina Kibuta. And we are going to have a glance on the Lido segment with Alfred Gans and we'll be back soon. 
In a world where literally anyone can be famous, I hope to inspire people to be talented instead. Talent will carry you so much further than your 15 minutes of fame. Talent, talent, talent. It is often said to be the world's most valuable resource. It has on several cases, however, been undervalued, especially in the developing countries. Think of the number of the talented people out there in your neighborhood who have never been given a platform to showcase what they do have. Boxing. Music. Football. Some assaulting. Cricket are the superb examples to use while defining someone's talent. However, it is not that much easier to develop a talent minus investing in it. Research shows that investment in two sports in developing countries is much less than in developed countries, as sports development is not usually a top priority in the national budget or in the education system of the most developing countries. Studies show that a vicious cycle is emerging as a result of the underdevelopment of sport in developing countries in which low investment in sports decreases the potential for athletes to build their talent. This also means that there are fewer prospects for athletes to continue their sport training or pursue professional sport careers in a developing country. In turn, the lack of the talent building opportunities in a developing country leads to a less return on the little investment put into local talent for the debilitating local sport development structures and sport career pathways. In developing countries, players are either enrolled in official clubs linked to the National Football Association or even play for non-affiliated sports associations. For non-affiliated players, their only chance of obtaining an international transfer deal is through the informal and often clandestine networks of player agents forming an underground labor market, especially in football. It is possible that the player's situation does not improve upon arrival in a European country. In the worst case, those players under the age of 18 and once successful in being recruited onto a European team often find themselves without a work contract or even return ticket to their home countries. Well, did you know that the heart of the talent economy is the people who represent it? Today's pursuit for talent is as competitive as ever, led by a growing skills shortage, advancing technologies, generational shifts and evolving dynamics around the nature of work. In today's global business environment, talent is as scarce as it has ever been. While workers in the industrial era were largely interchangeable, Today's most valuable jobs, and even some further down the chain of command, require a specific set of skills not easily found in the market. Understanding how to manage and motivate people requires business leaders to adopt a number of progressive strategies. Talent is the world's most valuable resource. It is time for leaders to elevate its strategic importance. Welcome back to Mlima Discussion Forum with me, Good Luck Paul. The topic today is compatibility of Tanzania education system with development of student talents. And it has been like an adventure of climbing the mountain. And now we are near to the peak. We are winding up this program with Detricia Pamba and Christina uh, Kibuta. Now we have been seeing the compatibility of Tanzania education with development of student talent. And, but we have the so-called... Uh, talent economy you know nowadays uh, people mm -hmm. are using talents to to make money uh, yeah. to 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 invest um do you think we can we tanzanians can use people's talents um to get rid of these uh, poverty problems mm -hmm. Trish? um yes totally mm -hmm. i i said before that talent is your one-way ticket mm -hmm. to success and i really believe in that because as i said talent is something you can do it without effort and you, you're going to be really best at it. Mm -hmm. So if you're best at it, why not make it a, a way of income and getting more money from it, you know? Okay. If you can write, then write and really write mm -hmm. to, to get something from it. Mm -hmm. Social media mm -hmm. is a really big platform. You reach, you reach a, a really um, a large audience. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, why not use that? The problem of Tanzanians, the way I see, and the youth of today is that... Um, when it comes to social media, we just want to post the things that we're doing mm -hmm. and we don't really give out content. You know, if you have a talent, mm -hmm. take your talent and give it, show it on your social media. Mm -hmm. uh, if you can write, show it, show people, you know, I have a poetry page. Mm -hmm. uh, when you open my poetry page, 
you'll only see my writings, What's the name my of poetry. That page? It's called Poetry by Letricia. Oh, okay. So you'll only see my poems, okay? I'm giving them content. Mm -hmm. I'm showing them what I can do. Your talent could be money. Mm -hmm. If you really use it well, there are opportunities out there. Yeah. A lot of them. Okay. So I believe you just have to go and seek it and show what you have, mm -hmm. show your talent, mm -hmm. invest in it, mm -hmm. add up skills, learn more, become better. Mm -hmm. Money will follow you. Thank you. Um, Christina, sure what do you say? Um, just to add on, on what she said, I believe, I think if we really want to boost our country's economy when it comes to talents, then the system has to accommodate talents. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. The Tanzanian system, Tanzanian education system has to really accommodate talent. Mm -hmm. It has to invest on talent, um, give it a platform, give it so many. I mean, see, this this Kesho Leo Science Slam is mm -hmm. the first, I mean, Science Slam to be done in TZ. Mm -hmm. And people have been studying for ages, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, so I don't really get it why it wasn't like put forward before. But it's okay, it's here now. Mm -hmm. So we should um, really invest on so many platforms such as this. And so many in in so many other fields, just to like um, give people a drive, you know, and say, okay, so I can have a platform to present something. Um, so my actually my country is um, putting so much value in what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So it gives people um chance to think, sit down and think, and to be challenged and to okay. go out there. But if we are doing something and nobody's appreciating it, nobody's giving us platforms mm -hmm. to show it. Somebody would just sit back and say, you know what? I think we all need to go in America because America does this. <laughs> well, if somebody says it's better to go in America, that would be lack of patriotism. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, thank you so much for being with us today, um, being guests of Mlimani Discussion Forum here in Mlimani TV of the University of Dar es Salaam. Mm -hmm. um, please, next time when I call you, please don't hesitate to come in. Yes. Totally. Thank you so much, um, Christina and Latricia. Thank you. Well, thank you. I would like to express my deep sense of gratitude for joining us from the beginning to an end of Mliman Discussion Forum. Um, you were with me. Good luck, Paul. Always Mliman TV, Elim Kwanza.